Amazing, yeah. Seeing guys I haven't seen in ten years, just like family, long lost, comes back together. It's pretty amazing. Picked up where we left off. It's like nobody's changed. It changed in good ways, and you see people, uh, their lives are completely different. Um, but it's never skipped a beat. Yeah, it's it's really amazing that to get this the amount of people that we have um, to to keep us together th this long. You know, after 10 plus years, having a lot of these guys, we haven't seen each other literally since. And it's it's amazing to, just like Kelly's saying, to just pick up as if we left Sangin yesterday. We heard we're in the Mount Town training for Afghanistan or the top of Afghanistan training. And then word comes down, down to shoot, hey, 3-5, we're going to Afghanistan. And so I remember me, Owen, and I believe Ely, we all looked at each other like, oh, shit, let's go take a seat. We went to literally sat down on the window just like this. Sat down on a wall and we talked. We're like, you guys want to go? We're like, yeah, man. Like, we're ready. Like, I remember that, actually, because I had to sign off on their stuff. And I remember I hadn't had – Kelly and Rob hadn't checked in yet. Um, nor, nor had you come to, over to us yet. And, of course, we didn't have you yet. But um, I remember all I wanted was uh, Castillo and Owen more, more than anything because those are, my, th those are my two, like, squad leaders that I had um, that we had been doing stuff together yeah. already. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to start fresh. I was getting ready to get out, college, everything was set up. And they got word that they were going to Afghanistan and I fought to come back. I didn't come back to second platoon like I wanted to. Third platoon picked me up. I had to re-enlist. As soon as I heard Afghanistan, I was like, man, like, who's going to take care of these guys? I can't trust some random Marine to come in here and start training these guys. What I, 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 I even trained them. And it, you know, it wasn't right, you know? So then it's like, you know, you get that bond, that brotherhood. You're just like, oh man, I love these dudes. I can't leave them. And sure enough, man, boom, we all went together. So, yeah, third platoon pulled me, in, and they brought me in just like a family. I mean, I knew most of the guys there, and transitioning from second to third wasn't wasn't hard at all because you guys brought me in like a family right away, even though I wasn't part of it. And uh, found out that we were going to Sangin because they already had the docs written up for us. And so we're picking the brains of this little lance corporal that's in their same rank as us, I guess, um, on what Sangin is because we had no idea what it was. And then we found out that we were going to be with you guys, and it um, it was it was a shock. You know, it was a shock coming from my my unit, that camaraderie that you guys got to build. I had to leave and then come to you guys in the deployment. You know, as we're as we're going, as we're landing down on the birds, like I'm meeting you guys for the first time. Cindy had just got there that that day. I think that was like his first day with the platoon. I don't even think he was officially attached to us. He just was out there training with us. And this dude, this was my first time I really met him. Uh, he was running with the 240 at the ready yeah. and he was talking so much trash to all the O3s that were falling out. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah, I do. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, who the hell is this <laughs> kid? Like, And then he looks over at me, he's like, this is all you've got, sir? <laughs> this is his first, this is a Lance Corporal, this is his first day. I'm like like some old salty prior enlisted guy. He's, he's just talking, talking trash to me. I was like, I want that one. I gotta have that dude. And that's really like my best interaction with him, unfortunately. I wish I knew him a lot better. And the way that Cindy stood out there was he actually came up to me before patrol and he was like, what do you want from me? What do you expect of me? What do you need from me? 
And he was basically the only attachment that did that. And so obviously that stood out. And I just told him, I was like, just do what you do. I've, you know, I've seen you, I know that you're good. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you got your stuff together. So I, I knew he was gonna perform. I absolutely knew he was going to. Our first patrol out, October 14th, 2010. Um, we were just doing a presence patrol. So we hit the north, hit the east, hit the west, and then we're kind of coming around south. So I call up to uh, our higher up, Lieutenant Patterson, our platoon commander, and I was like, hey, sir, uh, we're basically done. Uh, what all are you comfortable with us checking out? And he was like, uh, he's like, it was only about 30 minutes. He was like, if you want to, you can come back. He's like, but if you want to, you can check out something else. And so I just looked at the map and there's this area right south of about 50, 70 meters south of our uh, FOB, Falad, that's kind of like a cluster of buildings that just kind of stood alone. So you have all that open desert, you have the south, which is way too far. And then this cluster that was just really close uh, to base, just on the other side. So I looked at the map, I saw that, I sent it up to Lieutenant Patterson, I said, hey sir, there's a cluster of buildings that are pretty close to base, so I feel like we could get supported if something happened. I'd like to go check those out. And he was like, yeah, you got it. Sure, copy that. As we're coming across, approaching that building, cluster of building, they opened up probably about after the first team. So somewhere in the middle of the patrol, uh, top line opened up from multiple positions. Very hard to see it. Uh, most of us basically just ran across it, just getting to the closest wall that we could, took up positions. But the last two Marines got pinned down. So the heavy, all the fire got directed towards them at the end, they got stuck. Uh, basically, there was no micro terrain, and they just basically laid there and under just whatever they could find. So we keep moving the patrol, and about three quarters of our patrol gets behind cover, which are these buildings on the other side of the graveyard from the alleyway. And you know, your adrenaline starts pumping instantly. Like Sergeant Kelly starts screaming. That's what snaps snaps me out of it. Like, can't believe you're shooting at us. Like, you don't know who you messed with. He's running back, because we have guys out in the open. He's running back to give them cover fire. From that point where I saw what was happening, um, I didn't have to tell Sydney. I didn't have to say anything to him. And Sydney just jumps on the corner, and he was like, where are they? And I kind of gave him a direction. He just opened up with his 240, just roared like a lion, just completely gained fire superiority to the point where, and it was so quickly that the two Marines instantly saw that their fire basically stopped and Cindy's still on firing and just roaring. Meanwhile, we have 40 Mike Mike getting launched. <clears throat> we shot about 60 of those. And so the two Marines run over, rejoin our squad. So we have a decision to make. We're behind these buildings in cover, but we haven't gone to this one side. And this is the side that building 12 is, and it just shot at us. Every time we come to the patrol base, it shoots at us. So we're not gonna patrol that way to try to get back to base. We have to patrol back through the graveyard, through the danger area that we just came through where Smith and Molina got shot at from. Okay, so we're like coming up with a plan on how to get back, okay? And so Senny and I volunteer. We'll be the first ones across. Me, Senny, and Eric Nowak, our corpsman, will be the first ones across. So plan was somebody pops, start spraying the area and giving us cover and suppression as we move through this danger area to get to the other side. So I called up and I was like, hey, sir, I need overwatch at least. I need overwatch so we can move. And so a squad took up overwatch while the other squad was getting the QRF vehicles ready in case. They notified me that overwatch was set up. And so that's our cue to start moving. And so as we started running across, not soon after, they opened up on us again. The rounds are popping off at our feet. When I'm running, I can see the dust kicking up. The whizzes are going and pucker factors at all time high. Okay. And I'm winded, but I'm, I'm moving. And I look up and Cindy's kind of slowing down. He's kind of slowing down. So I'm like kind of running behind him. You know, I'm not going to pass him and step out of line. I'm, I'm you know, if anything, I'm going to help him because he's carrying the 240. I don't, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if he's been hit at this point, but as I get closer to him, I look up and I see above his sappy plate on his back. He's got a hole in him and there's a red dot. Oh my God, he's been shot. Like he's not gonna make it into the alleyway. So I push him to, so he can trip and fall into the alleyway, right? Not too far in front of me, uh, Sonny went down um, and I caught up to him and uh, I couldn't treat him right there on site, obviously, just because it was such a, 
a high threat of an area. So Pollard and I had uh, grabbed his flak and uh, pulled him pulled him to cover uh, down the alleyway, which wasn't even that much cover. He's on the ground, like rolling over, trying to get his gun up as Noak is helping him. I'm sending up the reports. They're treating the casualty like, um, <clears throat> and he's trying to fight us off, fight them off to get to his gun, to him place his gun so he can get the 240 up to help suppress the enemy as we're trying to treat him with the sucking chest wound. Uh, the whole time it was very difficult. He was, uh, he was still fighting. Uh, and it made it that much more difficult to treat him. We have a polis litter and we're trying to carry Senny, who's a pretty heavy machine gunner. He's probably like 200 plus pounds. Then he has his kit on him, which is his flak jacket and his Kevlar. And we're trying to carry him with a polis litter. It takes six of us to do it, to get him on there and to, to start carrying him. So I thought yeah. he was gonna make it. I thought he was gonna make it. I thought he was gonna be wounded. But as I'm telling him that like, you know, I'm talking to him like, yo, you're gonna make it, you're fine. Doc's working on, he's gonna, he's got you. And like, he was like, I, I can't breathe, man. And I'm like, no, you're good. He's, he's got you, you know? Like, I really thought he was gonna make it, but the way he was looking at me was like, he didn't believe it. He kind of knew he was fading. And then he did fade away and I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So we're moving him down onto the 611 where the trucks are staged. And he passes by me and he's limp. Like I look down and he's, he's limp, right? So I kind of know, like it hit me then that he'd expire. It's just despair. Like we just lost one of our brothers, somebody who, We'd been training with somebody who we've gotten to know, um, one of our friends, you know, somebody that we've seen around the barracks that we've been living with. Um, and it's, it's a sad day. It's a sad time. Like everybody's upset. Um, everybody's hurt and angry. Uh, everybody's questioning everything. And it's, it was, it was hard. It was, it was definitely hard to, to lose any. It was the, one of the bravest things I've ever seen. He's, uh... You know, he saved a lot of Marines' lives that day, and uh, yeah, we were very lucky to have him. Debrief 10 minutes, and I just walked into, a, we had a Connex box, remember, of uh, the British yeah. food, and I just started just hitting shit and screaming and yelling. Everybody probably heard me, but yeah, that's my initial, though. it had to be, you know? It had to be. And from, the, I had to get it out, and then it was game time. That was it. I gathered myself, and that was it. Yeah, having, having personally been with him on every one of his other combat uh, deployments as well, it's, I've seen him at his worst, I thought, and I've seen him at his best. But I, I'll, I'll tell you that the necessary few minutes after that happened, it, it was necessary to just get with him and kind of, you know, we talked it out we immediately we after. Yep, I, like, I, was, I, I was one yeah. of those ones that you trusted. Yep, 100%. Um, and being able to confide in each other, you know, we all had bad days. You know, every day was a bad day there, but uh, I think the, the way that we opened up to each other, I think is what really got us through each and every day. I didn't know how to handle it either. Uh, I remember, I, I think I kept it together pretty good until that night and I went to take a leak and then just cut, like bawled my eyes out and then it stopped. And then it was anger. It was like my job, you know, the, I don't say my job, the officer's job is to like, we talk like the revenge stuff. It's to control, we call it the sickness. Like don't let, don't let your guys get possessed. Um, how to do that was like my big, Unknown, because I felt it too. Oh, yeah. You know, what did you do with Sunny's death? I mean, right I mean, away, initially. I mean, you brought us in, and I, I think I remember. You know, it was it was probably about two hours afterwards, uh, and you brought us in, and you you know you, we said a prayer for his family and everyone everyone with us at the time. And what I basically remember is we got to get our heads up and we got to push forward. Like we can't let this let this uh, define us. We have seven months left here. Uh, and we got to push forward, not for, for everyone around us, everyone to the left and right, that's, we have to push forward. But it definitely fueled everything that we did after that. If you guys agree, I don't know, but um, oh, yeah, it was, it was, con we named our mortar tube city. I mean, every, everything we did, we named what we did in an operation that we just called Guardian Wrath, mm -hmm. just because. We didn't hear any about Cindy getting shot, anyone getting shot. And the only way, the, when I first found out that Cindy actually died was when I was in the half and uh, Pollard came in. And Pollard came in fucking just. Are you serious? Yeah. That's, you that's when I heard, because I didn't know what was going on yet. We didn't know, because it was still kind of quiet. You know, people knew, like, you guys knew, of course, but we didn't, because we're, we're, I was on top, of, like, trying to do security for you guys, trying to shoot wherever. We, we couldn't see shit, but we're doing what we can. Friends are here forever. I'm closer with, with, um, 
you know, these guys and think more, I, they probably don't know, I think more about you guys than I do anyone else. You know, like it's always trying to keep tabs on everyone. It's cool. I know if I call any one of these dudes or any of the others, like they'll, they'll be there. It ends with I love you. And it ends with always. I love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love you. Got to be. 100%.